Your questions and comments on the last rig building video gave me an idea to improve its versatility, and I'm happy to report that it turned out beautifully. Let's get undone. Gerald Undone. He's crazy. What's happening, everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and precision is a decision. So when I built this V-mount rig last month, a couple of the comments stood out to me. A few of you asked, why bother building up a hybrid camera to the size of a cine camera when you could just buy a cinema camera in the first place? And a few other of you mentioned how there's a bit of a hassle to take this whole thing apart if you wanted to put it on a gimbal. And one of you specifically mentioned that it would be easier and better if the camera itself was on a quick release system to get it out of the cage rather than just taking the cage off of the rails via quick release. Well, I have a solution for all of that. Now, I'm not gonna go over everything that I mentioned in the first video, so if you wanna know more about some of the parts that I don't mention, or about the powering options, please go and watch the previous video. I'll put links in the description and at the end of this video. So, most of this rig is the same, except for a couple changes. First of all, this is a different cage. This is Small Rig's QR Half Cage 2098, and it has one excellent feature that the full cage doesn't. And that is a quick release system for getting your camera out of the cage without needing to unscrew any rig elements. You just flick this lever over here, loosen that off, and then you can hold this down and slide the camera right out. Now the plate on the bottom is Manfrotto style, which means that it'll fit into some gimbals just the way that it is, but other ones are a bit finicky and it's a bit too tight. Like on the DJI Ronin S, I wasn't quite able to wedge it in there, but it was so close, but it'll probably work for other ones. But it does have quarter 20 and 3 8 inch holes on the bottom so that you can easily attach the plate for your gimbal to this. And again, you don't really have to remove anything, you can just add a plate and take it off whenever you need to. And it even acts like a bit of a riser for those of you that like a little bit more clearance when mounting it on your gimbal, or if you like to use taller lens support. And this also goes to answer the question of why bother building up your hybrid video rig system to be the size of a cinema camera? Well, because in less than 10 seconds, you can go from an all-day video solution to an excellent photo-taking solution, and this kind of adds to the value of your camera, because as much as I love cinema cameras, I also really like taking pictures, and obviously it's going to be better value in the long run to be able to do both with a single piece of hardware than having to buy multiple dedicated systems for each purpose. And you can also use this plate with all of the Manfrotto tripods and monopods that you may already have for your photography, but if you prefer Arca, you can actually get this cage and this plate system in Arca as well. But I've also taken this whole quick release system to another level by adding small rigs drop-in base plate 2006 to the top of the rails and the V-mount system. So that way, if I want to just use the cage in sort of a lighter solution, I can just take it apart like this and pop it in and out. And this bottom piece here, which is small rigs dovetail Manfrotto 1280, is an excellent little plate. It works not only really well with the small rig drop-in thing, but it also works with every Manfrotto uh, head that I have. And this one does work on the DJI Ronin S. So that way you can run a leaner cage design on your gimbal if you prefer to do that over using your camera naked. But yeah, big fan of this Manfrotto style plate from small rig. And you can also put the HDMI cable clamp that I recommended in the previous video on this half cage as well in the same spot. So you still have the ability to tighten down your HDMI cable and keep that small port on your camera safe. And really, the only real issue that I have with this cage is just the fact that it is a half cage and, you know, missing a bunch of mounting options. But I kind of have a workaround for that as well. So usually the cage would end here and stop there. But as you can see, we've extended it across. And all I had to do for that was get a cheese plate, which is what you can see on top here. And and a single washer and a single screw. And basically all you do is you use the washer in between the cheese plate and the cage. That way there's a little bit more of a rise so that when you put the camera inside, it's not putting pressure down on the hot shoe. And if you still wanna be able to mount something to a shoe, like a microphone or whatever, well then you can just get this shoe extension that Small Rig makes, and I have mine screwed underneath here, which actually provides more stability. And it puts the shoe out on the side like that, so you can put your microphone in here. And you can even angle a little bit so that the microphone points a little bit more at the subject rather than straight off to the side. And so then you pretty much have all of the functions of the full cage, you know, other than the fact that it's now like a three-quarter cage, I guess, effectively, but you still have the quick release options that you can easily switch to photography mode on your camera whenever you want to. And I've also got this thing on the side of the cage that I'm testing out. Some of you mentioned on the previous video as well that you thought that the friction arms weren't a great solution for monitor because they tend to twist a little bit, and you're right. So I'm trying this one out now. It's a double ball head design. The base is flat and it has grips on it, and you tighten it by screwing it into the monitor rather than screwing the monitor and when you get to the end there's a little hole there you can stick an allen wrench in and really crank it over so I, i've used it a couple times and it definitely does hold the monitor more securely if you still want the ability to articulate it but yeah good notes on the previous video guys it was a lot of fun trying to solve those problems 
and I'm pretty happy with the result. I obviously like to get the most out of my cameras, but I also like to use them for multiple purposes, as I'm sure many of you do as well. But that's going to be it for me. I hope you found this video helpful, or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. Alright. I'm done. <laughs>